Matthew chapter number 1. We'll begin reading in verse number 18. The Bible says this, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Uh, privily. But when he thought on these things, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying Behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you that, Lord, you've given us your promises. You've given us the truth of the scriptures. But, Lord, the half hadn't even been told. Lord, what you have shared with us blows our minds. Uh, why a holy God would ever care for a sinful man and why you would send your son into this world uh, to bleed and die for our sins, uh, become our sacrifice and our propitiation, uh, that, Lord, uh, you is buried and rose again, proving you were God, uh, made a way for sinners to be saved. Lord, I don't know why you cared so much for us, uh, but I'm sure glad you did. Uh, now, Father, I pray that, Lord, uh, you'd be with uh, that uh, accident victim or those accident victims uh, just up the road. I pray that, Father, uh, you'd uh, certainly have mercy on them and, Lord, your will would be done. I do pray for the Woodruff family. I pray for the trustee family. I pray for Miss Mary, Miss Cinda, others that are sick, uh, those that are traveling, those that are providentially hindered. But, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd sit down amongst us. Uh, you'd help us from the Word of God. Uh, and God, I pray that, Lord, your perfect will would be accomplished in the heart uh, of everyone in attendance. Uh, Father, bring glory to your name like you did that night you was born into this world so many years ago. Uh, and Father, we'll not fail to bless you and praise you for all that you do. Uh, use this unworthy vessel. We'll thank you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Uh, amen. I want you to notice a few things about these verses. Uh, first of all, notice the miracle uh, in verse number 18. The Bible says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, uh, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, uh, before they came together, she was found with child uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, aren't you glad tonight uh, to know that uh, the holiday we are celebrating, we're not celebrating a man. Uh, we're not celebrating uh, somebody who was just uh, like us, uh, but we're celebrating the God-man. Uh, aren't you glad? that he came forth born of a virgin. He did not have the sin curse on him like you and I have on us. It was a miraculous thing. God chose Mary of all the women on the face of the earth. She found favor with God and God overshadowed her with the Holy Ghost and she conceived and brought forth the Son. Hey, what a miracle we celebrate. That's why we have this holiday. It's not about trees. It's not about lights. It's not about gifts. It's about the gift that God gave to fallen man when he gave his son. We see a miracle transpire. Notice, if you will, the mindset of Joseph. I don't know about you, but if I'm espoused or engaged to a lady and she says, by the way, I'm with child, I'm not going to think too highly of her. And I'm probably thinking, uh, 
uh, nah, baba, nah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Notice Joseph's mindset in verse number 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Under the law, if someone was found, if a lady was found with child outside of wedlock, they were to take her outside the uh, gates of the city and stone her to make an example of her. Because uh, she had been a fornicator and she had sinned before God and before the nation. And can I say here, Joseph, being a just man, he did care for her. He did not want to see that happen. He's trying to figure out how he can get out of this thing and yet not make her a public example. We see his mindset. Uh, he was a just man. By the way, a lot of credit's given to Mary. And God chose Mary. But I believe he chose Joseph too. Hmm? Not just anybody would have handled this situation the way he did. Hmm? Uh, aren't you glad God's in control? You know, Joseph doesn't get much credit. We know that he's not the father of the Lord Jesus. He's just the custodian that was chosen to oversee the raising of the Lord Jesus, like the Lord Jesus needed raising. Mm. But aren't you glad that Joseph spent time showing him carpentry skills, not knowing that Jesus is the one who created everything? Uh, aren't you glad that Joseph took the time to take him to the synagogue? Aren't you glad that Joseph didn't mistreat him because he wasn't his? Hmm? Well, that didn't cost you anything, but I just thought I'd throw that out. Huh? But notice, if you will, also the message in verse number 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, uh, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and she shall bring forth the Son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, uh, for he should save his people from their sins. Uh, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, uh, shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted uh, God with us. Uh, we see he gets a message. Aren't you glad the Lord can always send a message right on time. Hmm? I don't know about you, but I know uh, I'm thankful for the night that I was in church, lost without God, uh, but God sent a message to his man. Uh, as he preached that night, uh, I realized I needed the Savior. Uh, that night when I called on the Lord, he saved me from my sins. Uh, aren't you glad for a message? I'm glad for, my me for a message from the glory world. We see the miracle. We see the mindset of Joseph. We see the message. Now notice the mincing, or that word simply means he honored or reverenced by consent. Look what happens in verse 24. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Joseph complied. He obeyed. He did what the angel of the Lord spoke to him in the dream about. Now notice verse number 24. Then Joseph being raised from his sleep did as the... Now what's that term? Angel of the Lord. Now Matthew's written under the Old Testament economy, is it not? Can I say Jesus has not ushered in the grace age yet, has he not? Hmm? In the Old Testament, anytime you find the word angel of the Lord, do you know who that refers to? Jesus himself. Now here's Jesus appearing to Joseph before Jesus appeared to Joseph. Let that help you for a little bit. Before he was born of Mary, he appeared unto Joseph. And spoke to Joseph in a dream. Hmm? Uh, I'm glad God's in control. You know, they just sang about the half that wasn't told. You start reading and studying stuff like that, that'll scramble your brains. How did that all transpire? I don't know. That's God's business. All I know is I got to believe it. I don't have to know it all. I just believe every word. Uh, I'm interested uh, 
in this little thought tonight. I won't preach long, but I do have a little thought. I want to preach on this thought. I want to preach on this is just what Christmas means to me. This is just what Christmas means to me. You know, if we started asking folks across the congregation, what does Christmas mean to you? Uh, uh, we'd get a myriad of answers. Uh, I'm sure a lot of folks would talk about friends and family and gathering and family and talking about Christmas times of old. Uh, 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 I can think back, uh, 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 Miss Lynn, when we were much younger, uh, 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 and what Christmas meant, how it meant so much to Mom and Paul, especially Paul, having the whole family there and uh, how it was important. We didn't have much. We didn't know we didn't have much. We didn't have much. Uh, uh, but it was always a big deal for my grandpa uh, to have Christmas because he was raised without anything. I mean, if they got a piece of fruit for Christmas, uh, that was a big deal. Some of you kids need to think about that uh, 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 tonight. Uh, uh, just a piece of fruit was a big deal. So he always made a big deal out of Christmas. Uh, and he always aggravated everybody to death uh, because no matter how hard uh, and how planned out uh, and how secret secretive everybody was with what they got him for Christmas. He always knew. Hmm? Always knew. He guessed it before he opened it. Uh, that's how he knew he's God's man. I mean, God spoke to him in ways, uh, uh, but he always made a big deal. And he always made a big deal uh, uh, getting something especially nice for my grandmother. And my grandmother was a lot like Edith Bunker. She was easy to fool. And I'll never forget, uh, 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 one year she had a, uh, he had a big old box. I mean, it looked like you could put a washer or a dryer in this box. Uh, and he filled it up with bricks, uh, and he filled it up uh, uh, with some shoes, some of her old shoes, uh, and he put some new dresses in there. Well, when she opened it, it took her forever to open anything anyway. Uh, but when she got up, the first thing she pulled out was some old shoes. She says, well, that looks like one of my shoes. Well, it was. Uh, uh, but she never, and finally she got down to what it was. Uh, he always looked to make a big deal out of Christmas. Uh, and I'm sure you have stories like that. Uh, when you think back about special Christmases, spending with your family, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, spending Christmas traveling or some way uh, or another. But when I think about wh what Christmas, what it just means to me, uh, uh, how could we ever celebrate Christmas uh, without thinking about the birth of Jesus Christ? Uh, hey, that's what Christmas means to me. Uh, that Jesus came into this world. Uh, now you that are Bible believers and have studied the Bible, uh, you know as well as I do, uh, uh, Jesus most likely wasn't born uh, on uh, uh, December 25th. Uh, uh, that's just the time uh, uh, somebody decided we was going to celebrate it. Uh, it really doesn't matter how uh, what the date is. Uh, if that was important, God would have told us. Uh, uh, it was probably in the fall, uh, maybe in September, because the shepherds, uh, uh, were keeping watch over their fields by night uh, and they would have done that more in the fall than they would have this time of year. Uh, it don't matter when he came. Uh, what's important is that he did come uh, and what a blessing uh, that we can take time to celebrate uh, uh, during this world of chaos uh, when there's problems and troubles going on everywhere uh, uh, for at least a little while. Uh, we consider our thoughts on the fact uh, that God uh, uh, cared enough about man uh, that he sent his son uh, and his son uh, was born of the virgin. Uh, Isaiah prophesied it in Isaiah 7, 14. Uh, Luke uh, gave us great details uh, about when the angels appeared to the shepherds uh, and gave them the decree uh, and the annunciation uh, that they'd find in a manger a babe wrapped, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Uh, what a blessing to know uh, Jesus came, uh, and he came for one reason, uh, to seek and to save that which was lost. Uh, can you imagine the king of glory stepped into a womb of a virgin. He was brought forth into this world, and the best they had to offer him was a stable. Can I say, where else would you expect to find a lamb? than the stable. The Lamb of God came. Can I say Jesus didn't come to build an empire or a kingdom. He came to die. He came as the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And He came into this world because He loved you and He loved me. This is just what Christmas means to me. It means the birth of Christ. 
Could I say Christmas means to me that sinners can be born again. The Bible says in John 3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, and by the way, let me clarify this, the fellow that comes and talks to Jesus in John 3 is one of the most religious men of his day. This man is so religious, he never misses church, he pays tithes of everything, uh, he studied under a certain uh, 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 scholar, uh, he is a very religious man, uh, he has the first five books of the Bible committed to memory. Does anybody in here have that done? No. But yet this man's religious, but he realizes there's some faults in his religion. And he comes to Jesus by night. And Jesus tells him this. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said, You were born naturally into this world, but that won't get you to the glory world. You can be religious, you can do all kinds of good deeds, uh, you can do all kinds of uh, penance, uh, but that's not going to save you. Uh, he said you must be born again. You've got to be born of the water and of the Spirit. Uh, You've got to be born of the washing of the water, the Word of God, and of the Spirit of God. Uh, ye must be born again. Uh, he goes on to say, we know the verse uh, in uh, verse 16, For God so loved the world uh, that He gave His only begotten Son uh, that whosoever believeth in Him not perish but have everlasting life uh, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world uh, but that the world through him might be saved uh, you say preacher what do we need to be saved from uh, our sins uh, our sins make us guilty before God uh, there's none that do it good no not one we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God uh, our sin uh, is what will send us to hell uh, and Jesus came to pay for our sins uh, so we won't have to die and go to hell. Uh, we can't be born again. We can't be made new creatures in Christ Jesus. Uh, Jesus made a way uh, for sinners. Uh, he said in John chapter 14 and verse number 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, in Luke 19, 10, the Bible says, uh, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Uh, hey, in Acts 2, 21, the Bible says, Says, uh, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, uh, and that not of yourselves. Uh, it is the gift of God, not of works, uh, lest any man should boast. Uh, uh, Romans 5, 9 says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, uh, we shall be saved uh, from the wrath of uh, through him. And Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The gift of God is salvation through Jesus Christ. This could be the greatest gift you could ever want this Christmas. For you, this could be a late 60, early 70 model Chevy with a 454, a blower on it, four speed, positive traction, powder blue or whatever color you want. It could be it. But if I hand it out there to you and you don't take it, don't do you any good. This could be special shoes that makes you play ball like Michael Jordan. Because we know you're not there. Uh, you can wear all the Tar Heel stuff you want. You're not Michael, okay? Don't, don't feel bad. Nobody else is either, okay? All right? Uh, there's only one Michael Jordan. Uh, I got to see him play. You just get to see the reruns, all right? Uh, but hey, this could be them tennis shoes. Uh, somebody made a movie one time where some kid put on shoes and played like Mike. Uh, this could be them. Uh, but if you just sit there and look at them, you still going to have Aiden's game. Huh? Uh, I don't know what you'd want, Xander. Huh? Let's say this could be Cinderella. <laughs> yeah. uh, there she is, glass slippers and all. But if you don't take it, hmm, ain't going to help you. You've got to receive the gift. Daniel, this could be a better looking daddy. 
Huh? Yeah, somebody said, take it. Huh? It was your mama. Huh? 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 No, it's a gift. Tonight and tomorrow, gifts are going to be passed off all over. I was talking to Isaiah before church. He said, Santa Claus is coming. I said, I'm going to catch him. He looked at me real funny. Uh, he said, he's a pretty nice fella. That's what he said. Uh, but listen, people are going to, going to be exchanging gifts and want gifts and, and they've asked for gifts and all those sorts of things. But if you don't receive the gift, if you don't unwrap it, if you don't see what it is, it's worthless to you. God gave the greatest gift that could ever be given. And He left His church here to preach the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The whole reason Jesus came into this world was to fulfill the demands that God placed on what it would take to be holy, to get to go to heaven. But unfortunately, none of us could keep God's demands. We can't keep the Ten Commandments, let alone all of them that He gave. So Jesus came to fulfill the law. He kept them. And then He became our sacrifice. He went to Calvary and died a death that we should have died, Brother Brian. We should have died that death and went to hell. He died that death in our place. Uh, and He took our death. And He took hell. And He took everything upon Himself. Uh, then He rose victorious over death, hell, grave. Uh, he died uh, according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. Uh, it was fulfilled or it was prophesied that he knew it. He fulfilled it and he did it uh, so that you and I that are sinners, uh, if we put our faith and trust in him as the only means of salvation uh, and we would receive the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, uh, we could be saved from our sins. Uh, and people have heard it, and they've heard it, and they've heard it, and they're more interested in the babe in the manger than the, than the crucified one on the cross. But you see, the babe was just the first step to the cross. And he died that death so sinners could be born again. Colonel, everybody wants to go to heaven, but they want to go to heaven on their terms. Well, God made one way to go to heaven. God's not interested in my opinion or your opinion in my ideals or your ideals. He's God. And He made a perfect way uh, where anybody from a child uh, to a senior could understand. Uh, and all they have to do is repent of their sins and ask Jesus to save them and they can be born again from their sins. And that's just what happened. Our Christmas means to me. I got that song on my mind. Uh, Christmas means the birth of Christ. And Christmas means that sinners can be born again. Right. But to me, Christmas also means the gifts and the benefits of being saved. Yeah. Hey. I'm glad if all he ever did, Brother Adrian, was save me, that'd been enough. Right. That'd been enough to know that I was saved from my sins. But Brother Tommy, I didn't realize some 49 years ago when I got saved, all that came with it. I just, I just thought, hallelujah, Jesus died for me. I, I need to trust in Him, and I did, and what a blessing. But just like the birth was the first step, being born again is the first step. The benefits that come with being saved, it's the best life you can ever have. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life, and life more abundantly. What people who are unsaved don't know is even though they're breathing God's air and walking on God's earth, they're dead to God. And until they get born again, they've never really been made alive towards God. And when they get born again, they receive life, but then they get life more abundantly. There are a lot of benefits that come with being saved. Uh, say, what's the benefits? Well, I've alluded to it. First of all, the forgiveness of sins. I'm talking about my past sins, my present sins, my future sins uh, have all been washed in the blood of Christ. Uh, and He never holds me accountable for sin anymore because uh, my sins were judged at Calvary. Uh, Colossians 1.14, it says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. I'm glad my sins are forgiven. Uh, 
A lot of times we have a hard time forgiving ourselves, but God has no hard time forgiving us because he died for us to forgive us. That's one of the benefits of being saved. My sins are forgiven. I thought about this. How about the fruit of the Spirit? What a blessing to have that benefit. Now Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against us. There is no law. Well, he gave us nine fruit of the Spirit. Uh, when you got born again, uh, a supernatural thing happened. Uh, the Holy Spirit of God, uh, the same Holy Ghost that conceived uh, Jesus in the womb of Mary, uh, that same Holy Ghost uh, came in your heart, uh, cut away the fleshly, stony part of your heart, uh, and he took up residence in your life. Uh, and then he starts developing fruit in your life. Uh, now listen, you can go and plant a tree tomorrow, uh, but it might take a little while for that tree to grow and start producing fruit. Uh, but hey, when you got born again, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, started a process uh, where he's developing fruit in your life. Uh, isn't it amazing? Folks you used to hate, now you love. Uh, hey, things that used to uh, uh, be a part of your life have been replaced with other things. Uh, what a blessing to have love. Uh, what a blessing to have joy. You know what this whole world's wanting? Joy. They can find a little bit of pleasure in sin for a season. And they can even find some happiness. But they can't find joy. Joy comes from the Lord. Joy makes you happy. Uh, uh, where you have a good countenance and a happy countenance when the worst and most troublesome thing can happen in your life. Joy takes over. Uh, only God can do that. Only God can take a, 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 a tragedy and yet help you in the midst of that tragedy where you can still be thankful and praise the Lord even in the midst of trouble and tragedy. Uh, he gave us peace, a peace that passes all understanding. I don't need to understand everything that's going on in this world. There's some things that confuse me. Some things I can't believe is going on in this world. I don't need to know all about it. I know the Prince of Peace. I've read the book. I know what's going to transpire. And as long as i got peace with God and the peace of God, nothing else really matters. Hmm? There are people that are troubled and troubled and troubled and worried about what's going on and worried about this and worried about that. I don't have to worry. I have peace. huh? It amazes me how pharmacies are getting rich and how places are getting rich trying to come up with drugs to get people to calm down and have some peace. Well, I got the answer. His name is Jesus. Hmm? It's one of the benefits of being saved. The forgiveness of sin, the fruit of the Spirit. There's more fruit of the Spirit. Thank the Lord for that. And how about uh, Brother Adrian taught on it Wednesday night. How about the benefit of having fellowship with God? Hmm? People look at you like you're crazy when you say, well, I talked to the Lord today. They're looking for you to get a rubber room. I really don't care. I talked with him. I walked with him. Huh? Huh? Say, does he talk back? Sure. Not with an audible voice, but he speaks through his word. What a blessing to have fellowship with God. I get to fellowship with God. Who am I? Huh? Listen. Most people in this world will never, ever know my name, but God does. Uh, the Bible said, 1 John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. There it is again. When your sins are forgiven, you can have fellowship with God. When you walk in the light as he's in the light, you have fellowship with him. What a blessing. That's one of the benefits of being saved. Uh, I thought about... This is just what Christmas means to me. I thought of the blessings of God that are available. Hmm? Listen. The only condition for God blessing us is that He chooses to. And for whatever reason, God chooses to love us in spite of us, and He chooses, us, chooses to bless us. You can't earn His blessings. You can't be good enough to get His blessings. But there's just something about trusting in him and obeying him and doing what the Bible says that just brings blessings hmm? he said that you know if, if you, you bring the first fruits to him he'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you can't contain he talks about press down 
chicken bubbling over when men give unto you. But there's just blessings that come to the children of God. I like Christmas time because, I don't know, I just like hearing Christmas music. I, I just like watching Christmas stuff. But, but listen, nobody likes Buddy the Elf more than me, but I've, I, what's it been on, 780 times this year? I'm done with Buddy. Uh, uh, that one and Christmas Vacation, they've run and run, and Home Alone 2 for whatever reason. Huh? They've run them to death this year. But I still, I like Christmas time. I like the happiness that comes with Christmas. Huh? But can I say, a child of God has the blessings of God every day of the year. His mercies are renewed every day. And he comes with blessings every day. Huh? I got to thinking about the blessings that are available. First of all, they're the promises of God. It's impossible for God to lie, and he gave us a bunch of promises we can anchor our soul to. Hmm? What a blessing to have those promises. Hmm? Huh? I'm not talking about politician promises, where they promise you something until they get elected, and then they renege. I'm talking about God's promises. That's a blessing, because the arm of flesh will fail you. Your closest friend, sooner or later, will let you down. God never will. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Huh? What a blessing to have that promise. huh? How about the blessing of, of uh, 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 the protection that God gives? Hmm? I'm glad I'm secure in Him. Uh, you know, this old world can take everything I've got, but they can't take Him. Hmm? But you know, in order for them to come at me, they've got to go through Him. Because I'm in His hand, and His hand's in the Father's hand. What a blessing to have the protection of God, to have the promises of God. What a blessing to have those things, huh? How about the blessing of the people of God? Huh? What, what a thrill to have God's people that we can fellowship with and enjoy one another's company and enjoy time with. What a blessing to have the haven of the church where we can come out from this chaotic world and just be amongst our kind and enjoy one another's company. Uh, I appreciate you all being here. A lot of folks think Christmas Eve, you got to spend with time with family. Well, I am. Hmm. Uh, I love God's people. They're a blessing. Uh, what a blessing to have God's people. I, I, what a blessing to have this church. Hmm. Uh, I have no doubt if I stood tonight and say, hey, I need some help, and I need help tomorrow morning. A lot of you'd be at my house 6 o'clock in the morning ready to help, knowing it's Christmas Day. Why? Because that's just who you are. Huh? What a blessing to have that as part of our life. Hmm? Then I thought about this lastly. I'm just talking, just this is what Christmas means. Had there not been the birth of Christ, none of the rest of this would have ever mattered. But I'm thinking we have a blessed hope. Hmm? This world has no hope. Hmm? Huh? Think about it. Since the Patriot Act was put into play in 2001, our country has went more than $30 trillion in debt. Do you think they'd ever pay that off? My granddaughter's great-great-grandchildren never pay that off. And how are they going to pay it off with our Social Security, you know, taking our taxes every, every month? How are they going to pay it off, Miss Billy, taking your salary every month from us, the IRS? Uh, how are they going to pay that off when we're letting 8 million illegals come into the country and we're paying all their health care and we're paying all their everything? Well, isn't it a sad crime? This is a crime against, against the Constitution and against the people of America. We have veterans that are homeless, and we're taking the illegal immigrants and putting them in hotels. Hmm? How are we ever going to pay that off in America? We're not. Huh? But they just keep pushing it back to the next generation. Well, I know this. You can blow a bubble with a piece of bubble gum as long as you want to, but sooner or later it's going to pop. 
What happens when it pops? Tell you what happens. America's going under. And by the way, the powers of be, that's exactly what they want to happen. Hmm. Because as long as America's strong and as long as America's thriving, America doesn't need anybody else. But when America pops, America's going to become like everybody else. And they need to be dependent on somebody, and his name will be the Antichrist. But can I say, there are a lot of people, as long as they got sports, as long as they got alcohol, as long as they can work their jobs so they can buy their alcohol and watch their sports, they really don't think about these things. Because the devil's been crafty to get people to live for the day. Give no thought about the future. Hmm? Think about these young kids. What kind of America will they have if the Lord don't come back? Look how bad America's got in the last decade. Huh? When I was a kid, listen, I know I'm old. Shut up, Josh. Either one of you. When I was a kid, you didn't have to go to college to earn a good living. Now you go to college, you still can't earn a good living. Huh? We live in a day and age where things have absolutely gone insane. Hmm? The house right next door to us went up for sale. The people that bought it paid $50,000 over what it's worth for it. That's happening all over Florence. What happens when they file bankruptcy? Nobody else is going to be able to pay that off. I'm just telling you, folks, this thing is on the brink of destruction. And people that are looking around are looking for somebody that's got the answers. That's why they'll follow any politician that sounds like they know what they're talking about. Hmm. Isn't it amazing they'll believe lies, but they won't believe the truth. But in reality, it doesn't matter to me, because I have a blessed hope. My hope's not in this world. My hope's not in what happens in America. My hope's not in what happens across the world. My hope's not even in global warming. My hope's not in any of it. By the way, they can save all the emissions they want to. This world's going to burn up with a fervent heat. That's what God said. First time he destroyed her with water, the next time he's destroying her with the fire. And my dear friends, when it burns up, there ain't going to be nothing left, huh? But I have a blessed hope. The Bible says in 1 John 3, Behold, what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Every man that hath this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. What a blessing to have a blessed hope. Jesus is coming. And when he comes, I'm going to see him as he is. When he comes, uh, I'm going to get out of here. When he comes, uh, all my troubles shall be over. I have a blessed hope tonight. I have a blessed hope because some 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born into this world, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. I have a blessed hope because 49, almost 50 years ago, I put my faith and trust in him. He saved me. He changed my life. And I have all the confidence in the world in what he says. Because he's my Savior. He's never lied to me. Never led me astray. He's always been everything he said he would be. And that's faithful and true. He's coming again. Hmm? What a blessing. And before he literally comes back, he's taking his church out of here. Hmm? Now, I hate to scare people on Christmas. But everything that he says that's going to happen when the Antichrist is revealed, can I say it's already starting to happen. And do you know, before he literally comes back, he takes his church out of here seven years prior to that. Friends, this may be our last Christmas on this side of glory. But over there, we're celebrating every second of every instant of, it, of the, the ages to come. And one of these days, I'm going to see him as he is. Hmm? Not going to see him as he was depicted. I'll see him as he is. He's the Lord of lords and King of kings. 
This is what heaven means, or what Christmas means to me. Let me ask you a question. Do you know the Lord? If you don't, why don't you receive the greatest gift you could ever receive? Receive Him. You can receive Him tonight. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved tonight. If you are here and you do know the Lord, let me ask you this. Are you shining the light before folks around you? A lot of folks in darkness. A lot of folks that went to a church service this weekend, but they're in darkness. We're to be the light of the world. We're to be the salt of the earth. Are you shining the light? My dear friends, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I know what Christmas is really about. And I'm glad to know that if he comes even before midnight, I'll be in glory with him. Do you have that assurance? You can. You can. How foolish to just be concerned about giving gifts to people and never receiving the greatest gift that was ever given. And his name is Jesus. Do you know him tonight? You can. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, maybe you need to come pray for somebody. Maybe the Lord spoke to you about something in your life you need to talk to him about. Maybe you need to come and thank him tonight for being your Savior, for coming, and then for mm, revealing to you himself and why he came. Maybe tonight... The Lord showed you you need to be born again. Why don't you come? We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. They're picking out a song. Many are coming. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you, Lord, that you came one day. And, Lord, thank you for the hope you're coming again. Lord, I pray now. I don't know anybody's heart in this building, but you know every heart. And I pray you'd speak to hearts. Lord, if there's anybody amongst us that doesn't know you, I pray they'd come receive the greatest gift ever given. Lord, for those that are saved, Lord, I pray that, Lord, they'd appreciate the greatest gift that was ever given and share you with others. Now, bless in this song of invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.